Welcome to another episode of Voice Cues from Trans Folks Like You, the series where I answer your most common questions about trans voice training. Today's question is, what the heck are vocal registers? Head voice, chest voice, what is all that? Tell nope. me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Hi, I'm Renee and I'm a gender affirming voice teacher. If you are looking into information about the voice from any perspective, two of the most common terms you will hear are chest voice and head voice. Oh, what, is, what does that mean? Well, chest voice is the lower part of your voice that most people speak with naturally. So what you are hearing right now is my chest voice. Whereas head voice is your high voice up here. Okay, that's a wrap, right? Break for lunch. Okay, okay, I'm obviously going to go into more detail about all this, throw in some exercises and cover both my trans femmes and my trans masks. But if you're just here for the quick and dirty answer, that actually is it. No, like, like really, please like, comment and subscribe before you leave. Now, if you're a voice nerd like yours truly and want a lot more detail on this subject and want to learn what vocal registers have to do with trans voice training, stick around. What are vocal registers? A vocal register refers to the range of frequencies in your voice that are produced in the same way or share similar qualities. Well, that is a little vague. I couldn't agree more. Well, let me tell you, the topic of what is a vocal register is still actively contested in voice science spaces. T, we need that galaxy brain meme that's like, there are four laryngeal vibratory mechanisms. Registration is nonlinear, and there are acoustical registers and strategies to blend or mix them. If you count every potential break or transition event, there's like 12 separate gears. Technically, every single micro pitch at every possible volume, and every possible sound color on every possible vowel is a different voice coordination if you really think about it. Holy shit, you're a nerd. <sighs> right? Okay, so brass tacks, there are four laryngeal vibratory mechanisms. Starting from the lowest part of your range, we have M0, which is also known as vocal fry. M1, which is also called modal voice, chest voice, heavy voice, or the register that most people spend most of their time in when speaking at an average volume. I'm speaking in M1 or chest voice right now. M2 is also called head voice, light voice, and falsetto. And this is the higher part of your register that people sometimes say sounds like Minnie Mouse. It might feel lighter and airier, and some people feel a flipping feeling or a gear change when they move up into it from M1 or chest voice. And it sounds like this. Then there is M3, which is the whistle register. Did you know I used to be able to do that? Let me try right now. Wait, I can do it. <clears throat> I, can't, I promise I can. Ah. Cut to my ah. I can do it. I can do it. Ah. <laughs> I used to be able to do full scales in my freaking whistle register. Oh, I'm sorry. Now we could go into a lot of detail about which laryngeal muscles are involved with each register and the position of the mucosal wave or whatever. But I think what's more important for you as a trans voice practitioner is how these registers feel in your body because at the end of the day, that is what you are relying on in your practice. Why chest and head voice? But let's back up a minute. Why do we call these registers chest voice and head voice? First of all, the names chest voice and head voice are very misleading. I feel these terms give the impression that different registers are created in different parts of your body or that you actually have more than one vocal instrument. But just so we're clear, the sound of your voice is always made here by the vocal folds inside your larynx, right here in your throat. It always comes from here. No matter what register you're using, the lower register or your higher register, the sound is always originating here from your one vocal instrument, okay? The terms chest voice and head voice were originally used because some singers felt more sympathetic vibrations in their chest when singing lower and more sympathetic vibrations in their head when singing higher. Try it for yourself. Put your hands on your chest and say a big, low ma, ma. Ma, 
Do you feel vibrations right here? Now, put your hands on your face. I like to do it on my forehead and try a, a sound like e e e. <laughs> the problem with using these sensations as signifiers of a successfully created chest or head voice is that they're completely unreliable and totally not universal. Personally, I feel vibrations in both my face and my chest when I say ma, and if I do any vowel other than e in my head voice, I don't feel vibrations anywhere. So if you've been hearing these terms and not feeling the vibrations where you expected to, it's normal. It's actually not weird. It's actually super normal. Increasingly, we see voice professionals and voice care providers moving away from these words because they just aren't always helpful. Some alternatives you might see are, for chest voice, M1, lower register, modal register, or TA dominant. And for head voice, M2, upper register, or CT dominant. So you are free to use the terms that make the most sense to you and support your learning the best. In my work, I use lower and upper register a lot because I think that they are the most descriptive and clearly associated with a sound of the voice. But I still use chest and head voice often because they're still arguably the most commonly recognized. What about the mixed voice? Okay, but what about the mixed voice, you may be asking. That is a 201 topic, so let's finish up with a couple of points first, and then we'll get back to that. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, different registers depend on different vibratory mechanisms. This means that they are produced with different muscles taking control in and around your larynx. Depending on where you are in your range, these mechanisms may be stronger or weaker. T, we need the graph. Yes, must. At lower pitches, your chest register is stronger, but as you go higher and higher in your range, it gets weaker and weaker. If you push your chest voice past the point where you can sustain notes, you will jump into this other vibratory mechanism, the head voice. I'm gonna give you a demo right now. May you pause the prompter? Thank you. So here's the demo. Uh... Did you hear that little flip? Did you hear the flip? Mm -hmm. So that is me jumping from the chest voice vibratory mechanism into the head voice vibratory mechanism. So let me try that again, just to make sure you can really hear it. I kind of have to be loud, so sorry if the audio is silly. Gotcha. All right, here we go. Uh... Did you hear the flip that time? Mm -hmm. You may notice on my graph that there is a zone of overlap between the head voice and the chest voice. That zone exists because vocal registers are not discrete areas of pitch that start and end on a specific note. They depend on volume and vowel shape and other things. And as a result, you may have a range of frequencies in your voice that can be created in both head voice or chest voice. So just for example, ah, uh, ah. Uh, I'm trying to distinguish between a head voice and chest voice sound, but I'm trying to keep the note the same. So just watch this. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I just did a scale that is alternating head voice and chest voice. So that is about an octave of range that I can do in both my head voice and my chest voice. Although the top note was a little bit questionable in the chest voice. I am not questioning that, sir. For some people, like me, this zone of overlap may be very wide. And for others, the zone of overlap may be very small. The wider this zone is, the easier it is to seamlessly transition from one register to the other. This zone of transition is where the mixed voice is produced. Now, strictly speaking, the mixed voice is not a separate mechanism. Rather, it's like a technique that helps you to modify the intensity of both your chest and head voice so that everything sounds the same in this zone of overlap. However, lots of vocalists do experience the mixed voice as a separate sensation to either chest and head voice. Now, just me, I don't. When I'm going from one register to the other, it doesn't feel like a unique uh, mixed voice. I can always tell sort of which one is dominant, but everyone is different. Now, one more thing that is important to note is that everyone's registers are unique to them. The notes that I comfortably produce in my chest voice are going to be different from the notes that you comfortably produce in your chest voice. My passage points between head and chest voice are going to be different from your passage points. There is no one way to experience your voice, and there is certainly no wrong way.
In addition to this, your registers are not fixed. You can absolutely do vocal exercises to bring your head voice lower in your register, your chest voice higher in your register, or to increase that overlap between them. And of course, there are exercises to blend the transition between registers. In fact, a lot of my time in my voice practice when I was an active singer was spent learning how to smooth out that transition. And now my job is helping people to smooth out their transitions. Oh, fanciful wordplay. Indeed. If you're looking for an exercise to help with that, I recommend this video. Why registers are important in trans voice training. Okay, so we've said a lot today, but we have not yet covered why registers are important in trans voice training. In general, an awareness of registration events are going to be most important to those seeking to feminize their voice and are interested in raising the pitch. As we mentioned earlier, your chest voice is the voice that you typically speak in. So if you're trying to raise the pitch and accidentally jump into your head voice like this, it may sound a little unnatural. Maybe a little too fluty or airy or like Minnie Mouse. What happened? When raising the pitch, we wanna try and stay in the upper end of the chest voice and avoid flipping into that head voice. To try and figure out where that flip or registration point is, pick a note that is firmly in your chest voice. Ah, uh, and slowly sing higher and higher until you're forced to flip into the head voice. Ah, uh, you can do this along with an instrument or into a tuner to figure out where that flipping point is your optimal higher pitched speaking voice will likely be below that flipping point. But as always, knowing if you're doing it wrong is just as important as doing it right. So here are a few things to look out for. Number one, where the voice wants to flip can change depending on the vowel you're using for the exercise and the volume you do it. So let me do a few different volumes. You already heard me go, ah, and there was a sort of light flip there. But if I go, uh, I don't even hear the flip. So if I do it quietly enough, I don't even really notice when I flipped into head voice. But if I do it on an E vowel, e, I actually don't really notice it either. For me to get the flip, I have to be on an A ah vowel, a really open vowel like A ah or O. Oh. Number two, some people may have a naturally blended register and may not notice a registration event. That is totally fine. If that's you, you may have a little more freedom about the pitch range you use for speaking. Number three, head voice is not inherently bad. We're not here to hurt you. In fact, if you're very expressive or excitable, it will be normal to spend some time up there. Like, oh my God, hi, how are you? Ah, whoa. <laughs> but it's not the place you wanna spend the majority of your speaking time, especially in more serious moments. So that's voice feminization, but what about the trans masks in the chat? We're out here. Typically, if you're masculinizing your voice without testosterone and you're working on lowering your pitch, registration events will not be super relevant to your everyday practice. Yeah! However, if you are taking testosterone, one of the things that may trip you up is that your registration events will change place. So the place where your voice flipped from chest to head voice before will typically become lower after testosterone. This can be kind of a mind because your brain will be expecting one thing, but then your body will do another thing leading to... Here's your taco, mister. Whoops, fell in the fryer. If you wanna work on relearning your registration points after testosterone, you can one, do ambulance sirens where you flip rapidly between your head and chest voice. Now warning, this exercise is very annoying to listen to, but very fun to do. I could do that all day. And number two, you can do slow glisses from top to bottom and bottom to top, just like this. This one's less annoying to listen to. Both of these exercises will help your brain remap your instrument. Conclusion. Wow, that was a lot of non-exhaustive information about vocal registers in trans voice training. <laughs> I could honestly have gone on a lot longer, but my editor T and I are trying to make one of these videos every single week on Thursdays. So we have to wrap things up here. Yes, must. If you want to really be a <laughs> disturber, share this video on any voice related subreddit and watch the debates unfold.
But seriously, sharing these videos, leaving a comment and subscribing here on YouTube or on my newsletter are all amazing and free ways that you can help this channel grow. Isn't that right, T? God, I hope so. <laughs> However, the best way to support this channel is by watching another video. So if you want to learn more about specifically pitch modification, check out my pitch playlist, which I've linked below. Am I forgetting anything? All right, that's all for today. I've been Renee and I hope this helps. You comfortably produce in chess points. Gotcha. I was looking ahead. <laughs> Ugh, chess voice, chess voice, chess, chess voice. voice. Chess <laughs> voice, chess <laughs> voice. <laughs> you comfortably produce in your chess voice. I can't do this. Jesus. Comfortably, comfortably produce, produce. comfortably, comfortably produce. produce. I'm so sorry that you comfortably produce. I told you I'd get it. I told you I'd get it. Good acting on that one. Good acting? Yes. Yes. <laughs>